I have here a Trek Madone in the SL7 in a size 54, weighing at 17 pounds, 14 ounces. And in kilos, weighing at 8.04 kilos. Stay tuned after the video, we have a free buy sound test on that wheel right there. Hey, how's it going everyone? GC Performance here, back with another video. And today I have for you guys the highly sought after Trek Madone in the SL7 version. This bicycle retails for $6,500. And this is a size 54. And as you guys saw, it weighed right in around 18 pounds for the complete setup on here. Trek just re released this bike mid-year and they were able to do so by making a cheaper price point by changing up the carbon layup on this bicycle. The Trek Madones used to only be offered in their OCLV 800 series, but now the SL7 and also the SL6 are now offered in their OCLV 500 series. They say the difference is about a little bit more over 200 grams for the frame. It's the exact same frame, the exact same geometry, everything you get on the normal Madone just a little bit heavier of a frame sound there. So you're getting all the technology of Madone, their new ISO flow, their seat posts, the integrated cables and everything like that, but you're just getting a cheaper cost for that. And also you're getting a hell of a deal on the components and the wheels on here. Uh, big shout out to Trek of Boca Raton. I'll put a link down to their uh, store below and ask for Chris if you're looking for this bicycle because this bike is in stock in a size 54. I know they're very hard to find. On camera, or from the pictures from the website, I definitely thought this was more of a white color, but this is definitely more of a steel blue or even like a cool gray, but the logo and the color of this bicycle is gorgeous. It's more definitely like a, a I'll call it like a slate blue, but they did a tremendous job in this color. Very good looking bike. And uh, for the groups that you get on there, an Altego group set, you don't see Altego group sets on bikes unless they're at least eight to $9,000, pretty much from any mainstream brand. So to get Trek with a new Madone, with a new warranty, with a new um everything with this new madonna here that is a really good deal for that bicycle um so i, I kudos to them and also you get a carbon fiber bar at 6500 where you see other other companies out there doing a alloy bar this is a carbon fiber aero bar in here so very good job to them and i really do like the look of this bike i think it's a great looking aero bike on there but let's go ahead and go through this whole bicycle and tell you guys everything it comes with so starting off with the handlebar in here this is their bond trigger rsl carbon fiber bar you have the rsl logo right here this is one of the things that also you get a little bit lower version on. A complete Madone used to get their one-piece cockpit with the bar and stem. Now on the SL6 and SL7, you still get a carbon fiber bar, which is great with the RSL on there, but it is a alloy stem as well. The cables are ran internally through the bar, underneath the stem, and then they go down the space as well into the head tube on here. You do get their own bond trigger handlebar tape. And then for the group set, like I mentioned before, this is the Shimano Altegra. Uh, two gears in the front, 12 in the rear, semi-wireless electronic group set on there. Altegra is a really monster of a group set. I did a video yesterday where I, or uh, a couple days ago where I compared Durace to Altegra for the new 12-speed stuff, literally down to the exact T of cassette size, rotor sizes, crank sizes, and I think it was only like 200 grams difference. Uh, so you're getting all the performances of Durace for half the price literally on the bicycle. Um, going down, you can add a out front stem mount on here if you wanted to for your Garmin or whatever, you probably get that through Bond Trigger, but you do have that option. And then like I said, you can always change out the stem if you want to. Best thing about these bike tools that have the cables ran underneath the stem is that you're able to have the breakaway spaces right here. So that way if you're unsure of your stem size, if you're unsure of your stem drop height as well, you can break away the spacers, put spacers on top and figure out your fit before cutting the fork or having to re-bleed your brakes, which is always nice. Going to the front of the bicycle right here, we have the Trek logo right here. Their big fat UCI new rule change with their deep aero condition right here. Nice wide clearance, but the Madones are different when they made them. They only made them for a 700 by 30 C tire clearance. Whereas everyone else in the industry is allowing about a 32, some even allowing a 35, which I think the Cervelle S5 is. Madone said, scratch that. We want an aero bike. We want to get as fast as we can. No one really needs a 32 C tire on a fast aero bike with flat roads. This bicycle, when doing what it's meant for, riding on flat grounds, is a literal rocket ship, so why not put like 28s on there and run it, okay? For the wheels on here, this is the Bontrager EOLUS Pro 51. It's a 51 millimeter deep dish wheel, and they do have the Bontrager hub and also the bladed spokes on here. For the rotors, it's a 160 millimeter Altegra uh, disc brake rotor, and on the other side, we do have their own Shimano Altegra disc brake caliper as well. You can definitely see here that they have the big old um, forks on here for the arrow shaped foil and then also you get that nice little touch of matte on the inside of the fork which looks really clean 
for the top tube of the bike, you can see here it's a nice matte finish. They always do that and they finish it off with the Madone logo right here, just in case you forgot what you're riding, and a brush silver on there. You have a beautiful, what looks to be a platinum or a brush silver Trek logo, which I really do like. Water bottle cage options right here, water bottle cage options right here, and a big old bottom bracket area down there on the side. They, they took advantage of the new UCI rule change, which almost looks like a TT or a triathlon edition on that bicycle, but it's a huge piece of carbon, again, to make sure this triangle right here is as little bit of opening as possible, add as much stiffness as you can to that BB area where you're putting down pressure at, and then they do have a threaded T47 bottom bracket on there. I believe it's a Praxis T47 bottom bracket, but that is a new T47 bottom bracket on there. Uh, which is very nice for the cranks on here it's an altegra crank set with a 52 36 crank set you have the altegra chain on there and also an altegra front derailleur which is very nice uh, we have in the back there a altegra cassette in 1130 and then the altegra rear dirt but you can see everything about this bicycle literally screams arrow they even added a little chain catcher right here so that way you don't drop chain while riding but the tubes are massive the aerofoil shapes are massive the rear seat stays are massive, the rear chain stays are massive. They want to make this bike as aero as possible and take up majority of space they can with carbon. Now for the fisting of the hole, for the for the hole, for the fist of the hole, for the ISO flow, I'm sorry. The ISO flow on the back. This is what they changed from their old ISO speed now to the ISO flow. The idea behind this is to allow aerodynamics better. Uh, they said that this is going to make everything more better with aerodynamics. Um, also, being suspended above kind of like a free area right here, they say they made the bicycle a little bit more vertically compliant. So, on aero bikes with these aero shapes, they're always known to be a little bit more stiffer than usual. But with this ISO flow right here, you're actually able to get a little bit more compliance over there, be suspended over free air, and allow it to be a little bit more comfortable. They do offer different size seat posts if you have a longer uh, legs on there as well, that you can swap out. But the seat post is carbon fiber, and that is a proprietary seat post as well. For the rear wheel, it's the same wheel as the front, the Bontrager ELS Pro 51s. They are not staggered by any means, it's just a 51 millimeter deep dish wheel. And then the exact same rotor as the front as well, a 160 millimeter, uh, a 160 millimeter rear deep dish wheel on there as well. Then you have a through axle over here, Bontrager through axle that you can actually pop off and take over to the front if needed to, which is always nice. You can run 140s front and rear on this bicycle if needed, but it's an option too. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, again, huge shout out to Trek of Boca, which I'll put a link to the store below. But um, I'm a huge fan of aero bikes. I geek out over aero bikes. I've seen enough in-between hybrid climbing bikes. I like the deep dish look of aero bikes. So very big fan of that Trek Madone. It looks very clean. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, guys, you guys are going to have to work with me this. Oh, sorry. You guys are going to have to work with me this free body um, sound test. Uh, the I brought my own tool for go ahead and loosen that thing up so that way we can hear it a little bit but the disc brake is rubbing uh because before it was like completely locked up so that way we can at least get it here for it so let me go ahead and spin this thing up and we'll give a uh, video you know what hell yeah <laughs> all right here comes uh, an els pro uh 51 millimeter deep dish wheel Bond trigger hub, free by Santos. Yaha. 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 That's gonna do it for this video, guys. Thank you guys again so much for watching. See you guys in the next one.